Portal 2 is my favorite game. It's it's definitely up there with um, with my other favorite games, uh, Fallout 76 and uh, Hunt Down the Freeman. Oh, uh, you family friendly. My face. Uh, uh, and now uh, you have my permission to die. And I, I've played it for a, for a very long time. So, therefore, I shall make a video on it, because I've never done that before. I've done it on my second channel, but, you know, you should just go subscribe to that and see that. So, I'm going to talk about it now, you know, in this hour-long video. I think it's going to be an hour, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't actually finished the video yet. I'm halfway through. But that doesn't matter. So, just enjoy the video. Please. I first played Paul a very long time ago. It was I was about eight. I loved Half Life at the time, and to this day, I still haven't actually finished a Half Life game, unless you can count Black Mesa. I finished that like yesterday. So when the orange box came out for the Xbox 360, I was so excited. So I decided, hey, it comes with other games, so they'd be cool to play some more games. So I uh, I played Team Fortress 2, got bored. I still don't like Team Fortress 2 very much, but Portal was one that it really stuck with me. I mean, I didn't care too much about it when I played it. I think the reason I didn't really enjoy the first Portal game as much as I would have is more because of the humour. Like, a lot of the humour in Portal just went right over my head. It was so, like, obscure humour that I just did not get any of it. So I, I was fully convinced it was, like, a completely serious game, and that's why it sort of bored me. But I still got through it and finished it. Then the second game came out, and uh, the second game is is really what, what did it for me. So I bought it, and I started playing it. have been in suspension for 50 days. In compliance with state and federal regulations, all testing candidates in the Aperture Science Extended Relaxation Center must be revived periodically for a mandatory physical and mental wellness exercise. At the start of the game, you wake up in the Aperture Science Extended Relaxation Center, which is basically just a cryo chamber, but it's like a hotel room. It's uh, it's pretty it's pretty cool. The voice from the sky called the announcer talks you through the, the mandatory physical and mental wellness exercise. This part is very haha. -ha. It's not really like laugh out loud, lol funny, but it's like, you know, you sort of, you get the joke and it, it's like, oh, that's, that's pretty, that was a pretty funny joke. You'll see what I mean. Just, just watch this. You will hear a buzzer. When you hear the buzzer, look up at the ceiling. You will hear a buzzer. When you hear the buzzer, look down at the floor. This completes the gymnastic portion of your mandatory physical and mental wellness exercise. This is art. You will hear a buzzer. When you hear the buzzer, Stare at the art. You should now feel mentally reinvigorated. If you suspect staring at art has not provided the required intellectual sustenance, reflect briefly on this classical music. Now, please return to your bed. Good morning. You have been in suspension for nine, 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 nine. Hello? Hello? Are you gonna open the door at any time? When you wake up after extended relaxation, you notice it's, uh, it's a little bit different. There's some broken walls, damaged furniture. I mean, the painting. It's turned to night, boys. Boys, it is turned to night. What do we do? The announcer kind of struggling a bit, trying to tell you how long you've been under for. Night, 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 night. It's then that you hear a knock on the door. Hola, amigo. Abre la puerta. Donde esta... No, um... Fine! No, fi absolutely fine. It's not like I don't have, you know, 10,000 other test subjects begging me to help them escape. You know, it's not like this place is about to explode. All right, look, okay, I'll be honest. You're the last test subject left, and if you don't help me, we're both gonna die. All right, I didn't want to say it. There you go. You've dragged it out of me. All right, dead. Ha! Ah! Oh, God. You look... Te um... Good. Looking good, actually. Wheatley is a core. Like these epic gamers from the first game. Wheatley claims that you two are going to go and escape, and he starts trying to lift up the whole container. You alright down there? Can you hear me? Hello? 
Wheatley realizes he's not speaking to a voice protagonist, so he comes down to chat. This is another very good tutorial. You'll see why in just a second. Most test subjects do experience some uh, cognitive deterioration after a few months in suspension. Now, you've been under for quite a lot longer, and it's not out of the question that you might have a very minor case of serious brain damage. But don't be alarmed, all right? Uh, although if you do, if you do feel alarmed, try to hold on to that feeling because that is the proper reaction to being told that you've got brain damage. Do you understand what I'm saying at all? Does any of this make any sense? Just tell me. Just say yes. Okay. What you're doing there is jumping. Uh, you just you just jumped. But never mind. Say apple. Apple. Okay. You know what? That's close enough. Tweely's job to look after all the subjects and relaxation but you shortly realize how terrible he is at his job. Okay, look, I wasn't gonna mention this to you, but I'm in pretty hot water here. The reserve power ran out, so of course the whole relaxation center stops waking up the bloody test subjects. And of course, nobody tells me anything. No, why should you tell me anything? Why should I be kept informed? You know, about the life functions of the 10,000 bloody test subjects I'm supposed to be in charge of. And whose fault do you think it's going to be when the management comes down here and finds 10,000 flipping vegetables? Okay, listen, we should get our story straight, all right? If anyone asks, and no one's going to ask, don't worry, but if anyone asks, tell them as far as you know, the last time you checked, everyone looked pretty much alive, all right? Not dead. Willie then takes you to a docking station. Well, it's not a docking station, it's a wall, but in his eyes, it's a docking station. On the other side of that wall is one of the old testing tracks. There's a piece of equipment in there that we're going to need to get out of here. I, I think this is a docking station. Get ready. Good news, that is not a docking station. So there's one mystery solved. You then get to the testing track he was trying to find, which just so happens to be the same one from the first game. Hello, and again, welcome to the Aperture Science Enrichment Center. We are currently experiencing technical difficulties due to circumstances of potentially apocalyptic significance beyond our control. These pre-recorded messages will provide instructional and motivational support so that science can still be done, even in the event of environmental, social, economic, or structural collapse. This is a game I like to speedrun a lot, so this is a small example of how cool I am. In Test Chamber 2, you meet up with Wheatley again, and he shows you to the uh, Aperture Science Quantum Tunneling device. I can't see it though. Maybe it fell off. Do you want to go and have a quick look? Oh! Hello? Can you see the portal gun? Also, are you alive? If that's important, you should have asked that first. I'm, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to work on the assumption that you're still alive and I'm just going to wait for you up ahead. I'll wait, I'll wait one hour, then I'll come back and assuming I can locate your dead body, I'll bury you. Alright? Brilliant. Go team! See you in an hour, hopefully, if you're not dead. Then later in Test Chamber 7, you find Wheatley again and he guides you to the escape elevator. However... In order to escape, we're going to have to go through her chamber and she will probably kill us if if she's um, awake. You make your way through the remains of GLaDOS's chamber, GLaDOS being the AI that you killed in the first game. There she is. What a nasty piece of work she was, honestly. Like a proper maniac. Do you know who ended up, uh, do you know who ended up taking her down in the end? You're not gonna believe this. A human. I know, I know, I wouldn't have believed either. Apparently this human escaped and uh, nobody's seen him since. Jump! This, actually, look at it, that is quite a, that's quite a distance, isn't it? Okay, you know what? Uh, go ahead and jump. You've got you've got braces on your legs, so you're all set. Although no braces on your arms, though, so you're going to have to rely on the old human strength to keep a grip on the device and, by extension, me. So do, do really make sure you keep a grip on me. Wheatley takes you to the main breaker room, and he tells you to look for a switch that says escape pod, but I don't think Wheatley accounted for the textures of the game, however, because... Even on the highest settings, it just looks like a blurry mess. After an unsuccessful search for the lever, Wheatley decides, how about you uh, plug him in? You just plug him into that stick right there. You know, that stick, just plug him in and he'll turn the lights on. Then, however, he completely undoes everything he's done so far by... Oh, look at that, turning. Ominous, but probably fine, as long as it doesn't start, you know, moving up. It's, it's moving up. Okay, okay, no, don't, don't worry, don't worry. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. This should slow it down. No, makes it go faster. Uh-oh. Power up initiated. Okay, don't panic. All right, stop panicking. Uh, I can I can still stop this. Oh, there's a, there's a password. Okay, it's fine. I'll just, I'll just hack it. Not a problem. 
Wait, did I do big do you have a pen? Start writing these down. Power up, complete. I don't okay, 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 listen. Alright, new plan. Act natural, act natural, we've done nothing wrong. Hello! Oh, it's you. You know her? It's been a long time. How have you been? I've been really busy being dead. You know, after you murdered me. You did what? Uh... Oh no! No, 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 no! Oh no, 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 no! Yeah. Okay, look. We both said a lot of things that you're going to regret. Bro, why did you have to wait? What the us. flip? I will say, though, that since you went to all the trouble of waking me up, you must really, really love to test. I love it too. There's just one small thing we need to take care of first. Then GLaDOS basically drops you into the incinerator room, which just so happens to be the same fire pit from the first game. She gives you loads of passive aggressive messages. But the important thing is you're back with me. And now I'm onto all your little tricks. So there's nothing to stop us from testing for the rest of your life. After that, who knows? I might take up a hobby. Reanimating the dead, maybe. So the next few chambers is pretty much the same. Gladys is being passive aggressive towards you and occasionally Wheatley will show himself. Hey, it's me! I'm okay. The aerial faith plate in here is sending a distress signal. You broke it, didn't you? This plate must not be calibrated to someone of your generousness. I'll add a few zeros to the maximum weight. You look great, by the way. Very healthy. Two reoccurring things with Gladys is one, you're fat. And two, you have no parents. She's in spite because, you know, you killed her and she she wasn't very happy with that. She was like, bruh. So she stooped down to just straight up insulting you like a child. Lol. Then after a few more tests, you find Wheatley yet again. But this time Wheatley's kind of in a rush. Hey, buddy, I'm speaking in an accent that is beyond her range of hearing. I know I'm early. But we have to go right now. Walk casually toward my position and we'll go shut her down. Look, metal ball, I can hear you. Run, I don't need to do the voice, run! He takes you out the test chamber. You go through a series of corridors and pathways. GLaDOS tries to trick you, but you know, no one's stupid enough to fall for that. Wait, where are you going? Where are you going? Oh look, there's a deer. You probably can't see it. Get closer. And not me. You get to sort of a behind the scenes part of Aperture. Gladys doesn't like you being there, so she switches off the lights, leading Wheatley to do something absolutely insane. Here we go. Ah! Oh, for God's sake, they told me that if I ever turned this flashlight on, I would die. What a madman, really. So you and Wheatley make your way through Aperture Science. Eventually you get to the turret. What is it called? Eventually you get to the turret redemption line. This is effectively just where turrets get recycled. You come across this little turret that tells you a few, um, things. Don't make lemonade. Prometheus was punished by the gods for giving the gift of knowledge to man. He was cast into the bowels of the earth and picked by the All being foreshadowing for future plot points. In Portal 2, you have two types of turrets. You have your defective turrets and your non-defective turrets. And the differences between the defective turret and the normal turret is that the defective turret is bad at making videos and not funny. And the normal turret is really cool and you should subscribe blind and has no bullets. Whereas the normal turret is, well, a turret. Moving on. Once you get to the turret control center, Whitley very cleverly hacks the door and you replace the turret. Right, um, hmm. I'm gonna have to hack the door so that we can get at it. 
technical. Um, you'll need to turn around while I do this. Template. Hello. Response. Hello. Done. Hacked. Okay, go on. Just pull that turret out. Response. Hello. And you replace the preset turret with the defective one. So, you know, all the, the ones chosen are defective instead of normal. So then later on, you get to the neurotoxin, which is a big brain idea. Don't know how Wheatley came up with it. And what you do here is you effectively just destroy the entire tank. Warning, neurotoxin pressure has reached dangerously unlethal levels. Then after that, a tube opens up that takes you very conveniently to GLaDOS's lair. But during the tube ride, you and Wheatley get separated, leaving you to face GLaDOS on your own. GLaDOS sets up a trap for you, which uh, is very big brain, and then bullies you when you fall for her trap. I honestly, truly didn't think you'd fall for that. In fact, I devised a much more elaborate trap further ahead for when you got through this easy one. If I'd known you let yourself get captured this easily, I would have just dangled a turkey leg on a rope from the ceiling. Well, it was nice catching up. Let's get to business. I hope you brought something stronger than a portal gun this time. Otherwise, I'm afraid you're about to become the immediate past president of the Being Alive Club. Uh-huh. Seriously, though. Goodbye. I mean, jokes on her, though, because we replaced the turrets and destroyed the neurotoxin. This is where the cool stuff happens, right? So the plan is, Wheatley is going to uh, go into this stick here. He's going to be put into that stick. You know, that stick right there. And that will initiate a core transfer, which basically means you're going to put Wheatley in Gladys's body. But unfortunately, to do that, Gladys has to agree. And obviously, she doesn't agree, which means the player has to go and press the stalemate button. And she's like, bruh. Bro, nah, bro, bro, stop, bro. Seriously, bro, stop. You need to be a trained stalemate associate to press that button. You're unqualified. Impersonating a stalemate associate. I just added that to the list. It's a list I made of all the things you've done. Well, it's a list that I am making because you're still doing things right now, even though I'm telling you to stop. Stop, by the way. While I've been stalling you, we just pressed the button. Stalemate resolved. Please return to the core transfer bay. Here I go! Wait, what if this hurts? What if this really hurts? Oh, I didn't think of that. Oh, it will. Believe me, it will. Are you are you just saying that or is it really gonna hurt? No, stop! No! 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 Once Wheatley has control of the entire facility, he gets a bit sidetracked, but he does call a lift for you to escape, which is kind of the whole point. And then, um, this is where it goes downhill. Oh, sorry, sorry no, the, the lift. lift. Yes, yes, sorry. sorry. Forget it. This body is amazing. Seriously. I can't get over how small you are, but I'm huge. <laughs> Generating an endless stream of terrible ideas. 
No, not listening, not listening. No, you, no, you're lying, you're lying. Now, if you haven't noticed, I've been using Portal 2 music over this video, obviously because it's a Portal 2 video, but I could have used any music. In fact, I was originally going to use some songs by Steven the Dreamer on SoundCloud, but then realized that the Portal 2 soundtrack is perfect for this, as well as it's probably one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. The reason behind this, I've no idea, but it's most likely because I grew up playing Portal 2 and listening to that music, so it sort of grew on me. Especially in um, the scene I just showed you with Wheatley becoming in control. It's just the music of that whole scene was really good. So as a little as a little sample, here's a few of my favorite songs from the Portal 2 soundtrack. And after this, we can get back to the video. So uh, please enjoy.
You and GLaDOS now in the form of a potato fall down a bottomless pit. When you get to the bottom of that bottomless pit, you find yourself in a kind of wasteland, really. This is probably one of my favorite levels of the game because of the sheer scale. The more you go through, especially this map, you just see the size of Aperture Science. And this is only one layer of it. You can't really get your brain around how big the place is until you get down and, and see it for yourself. And even then, it still doesn't really do it justice. It's way bigger than that. You make your way through the remains of old Aperture, I guess, and you end up in this room, which is pretty, pretty epic looking. It's kind of big. It's got the big vault door. You have to click the two switches basically at once using portals. And once you get the door open, there's another door, but it's, it's, just, a, it's just a mini small door, you know, dramatic effect. But when you go through that small door, you have well a loading screen. But after that, you have a massive pool of neurotoxin like just massive and some old weird looking spheres uh, with some old Aperture Science logos that look pretty cool. Um, they're all destroyed. This place does look pretty epic. But once you get past all that, you get to uh, a, little, a little control panel with the door. And once you get through there, you hear the CEO of Aperture Science. You're here because we want the best, and you are it. So, who is ready to make some science? I am. <laughs> now, you won't want to one another in a little while over, over, so let me introduce myself. I'm Kay Johnson. I own the place. That eager voice you heard is a lovely Carol, my assistant. Rest assured, she has transferred your honorary to the charitable organization of your choice. Isn't that right, Carol? Sir, Mr. Johnson. She's the backbone of this facility. Pretty as a postcard to do. Sorry, fellas. She's married to science. The old aperture sections of the game take place in an old salt mine bought out in the 40s by Cave Johnson. The salt mine contains nine test shafts, all housing enrichment spheres, which are massive spheres suspended in the air by metal poles connected to the walls or containing test chambers. Test shaft 9 is the test shaft that the old aperture parts take place in. Codenamed Zulu Bunsen, this test shaft houses the story behind aperture science as well as the gels that become a mechanic layer in the game. The size of the facility is something I will talk about in a video on its own because I'm really interested in that. What I will say though is that each testing shaft is around four kilometers deep coming from the bottom of the salt mines where you drop down to just below the new enrichment center where Wheatley is and where the main parts of the game take place. As there's nine test shafts, each one being around four kilometers deep, as stated by the signs on the fall down the shaft, the estimated size of old aperture is at least 36 kilometers. That's a really rough estimate because it doesn't really take into account the new enrichment center and it also doesn't take into account the spaces between the shafts. And there is a lot of space between the shafts, as you see when you go through the old aperture sections. So just keep that in mind and let's continue with the video. Of you helping us test the repulsion gel today, just follow the blue line on the floor. Those of you who volunteered to be injected with praying mantis DNA, I've got some good news and some bad news. Bad news is we're postponing those tests indefinitely. Good news is we've got a much better test for you, fighting an army of mantis men. Pick up a rifle and follow the yellow line. You'll know when the test starts. Cave Johnson is the CEO of Aperture Science, played by J.K. Simmons. He's pretty much identical to the character he played in the Spider-Man movies. But could you pay me in advance? <laughs> Cave Johnson is probably the funniest character in the game. But all the sections he's in tell you stuff about like Aperture Science, the history behind it. You learn more about Cave Johnson and even the origins of GLaDOS. So it's really interesting. I'm not going to say too much because we'll get to that in a bit, but let's move on. Just a heads up, we're going to have a superconductor turned up full blast and pointed at you for the duration of this next test. I'll be honest, we're throwing science at the wall here to see what sticks. No idea what it'll do. Probably nothing. Best case scenario, you might get some superpowers. Worst case, some tumors, which we'll cut out. If you've cut yourself at all in the course of these tests, you might have noticed that your blood is pure gasoline. That's normal. We've been shooting you with an invisible laser that's supposed to turn blood into gasoline, so all that means is it's working. As you go through the old parts of Aperture Science, you find yourself having to go through puzzles when you're not even in tests, mainly because of how destroyed the place is. So, for example, in this part, you've got to fling yourself all the way up to that platform over there because somehow the bridge over there got destroyed. Going through all these old Aperture test tracks, you're basically finding ways to turn on the pumps for the gels so you can use them in your tests. 
there's three types of gels. There's refr I don't remember the names. There's repulsion gel, propulsion gel, and conversion gel. Repulsion gel is a very bouncy surface. So for example, if you jump while you're on it, you'll get quite a lot of height. Propulsion gel is a gel that makes you go very fast. And conversion gel is just a gel that lets you put portals on any surface. So you activate the gel and go down the lift to your first test. Another thing about the music, I know I, I don't shut up about it, but another thing about it is that some points in the game, you have music that layers. So, for example, in this test, you start with the normal track of the song, and then as you solve the test, more parts of the song become audible. So, for example, in this test, you have the song, I think it's You're Not In The Control Group. When this song's playing, it's, it's relatively normal. And then when you jump on the repulsion gel, it adds a little extra layer to the song while you're in the air. But it's stuff like that. It's littered throughout the entire game. It was in parts way before this, but I, I just decided to talk about it now instead of talking about music all in one go. So uh, yeah, cool. Let's move on. So as you go through the tests, you learn a bit more about Cave Johnson and Aperture Science. I'm not going to go in too much detail because this video is already too long. You progress further through the years as you go through the tests. For example, the first one you go on is from the 40s. Then the next set of test chambers you go on is from, I think, the 60s and the 70s and then the 80s. And throughout that entire time, you're listening to Cave Johnson getting older and you listen as Aperture Science competes with Black Mesa from the Half-Life universe. Black Mesa can eat my bankrupt- Sir, the testing? Right, who wants to make $60? Cash. You can also feel free to relax for up to 20 minutes in the waiting room, which is a damn sight more comfortable than the park benches most of you were sleeping on when we found you. You're here because we want the best, and you're it. Nope, couldn't keep a straight face. There's a reason I'm showing this part in particular, and that's because of two reasons. One, this is where GLaDOS is, you'll see in a minute. And two, there is an easter egg in this bit that um, hints at a, at, a, at a future video game that um, until now has uh, never never even been released or anything. The Dock of the Borealis, a ship made by Aperture Science for Black Mesa, shown in Half-Life 2 Episode 2, I think. It's the Borealis! Good God! Incredible! What? Our peers at Aperture Science were at work on a project of some promise. But in their rush to beat Black Mesa for funding, they must have compromised ordinary standards of risk. We heard their research vessel had simply disappeared, vanished with all hands, and even part of the dry dock. All right. Uh, anyway, back there. Uh, let's go to Gladys. Once you find Gladys, you uh, you stick her onto you. No, you stick Gladys onto your portal gun, and then you you fling, you fling to the to the lift to the elevator over there, and then you continue with the tests. You do this pretty cool test, which is with the propulsion gel, I think. But just before you finish the last test, there is a small Easter egg where you can go into this little room here, and uh, Gladys will say to this this painting of Cave Johnson and, and Carolyn. Those people in the portrait, they look so familiar. Which is obviously foreshadowing. Um, I'll get to that later. And then you finish the testing track after another few tests. Thank you. I can't believe I'm thanking these people. For staggering your way through Aperture Science's propulsion gel testing, you've made some real contributions to society for a change, and for that, humanity is grateful. If you have any belongings, please pick them up now. We don't want old newspapers and sticks cluttering up the building. You get teased a lot in these old Aperture sections, with there being elevators to the surface at the end of every testing track. When you get to the next section, GLaDOS has a bit of a, a, bit of a realization. So if you didn't get what that was implying, Carolyn is GLaDOS. Um, I won't say exactly how it happened, because it will actually explain it in the game later, so there's no point. So just wait, and then you'll have to find out yourself. But anyway, you activate the gels and stuff, you get out of the room, and then you fling yourself again, and then Cave Johnson starts dying. Welcome to the Enrichment Center. 
Since making test participation mandatory for all employees, the quality of our test subjects has risen dramatically. Employee retention, however, has not. <coughs> As a result, you may have heard we're going to phase out human testing. There's still a few things left to wrap up, though. Now, the bean counters told me we literally could not afford to buy seven dollars worth of moon rocks, much less 70 million. Bought them anyway. Ground them up, mixed them into a gel. And guess what? Ground up moon rocks are pure poison. I am deathly ill. Still, it turns out they're a great portal conductor. So now, we're gonna see if jumping in and out of these new portals can somehow leach the lunar poison out of a man's bloodstream. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> you solve the last test of old Aperture, and you hear this amazing speech. I'm pretty sure this is iconic at this point for this game. All right, I've been thinking. When life gives you lemons, don't make lemonade. Yeah. Make life take the lemons back. Yeah. Get mad. Yeah. I don't want your damn lemons. What am I supposed to do with these? Yeah, take the lemons. Demand to see life's manager. Yeah. Make life rue the day it thought it could give Cave Johnson lemons. Do you know who I am? I'm the man who's gonna burn your house down with the lemon. I'm gonna get my engineers to invent a combustible lemon that burns your house down. <laughs> He then goes on to say about artificial intelligence. This is what I was saying earlier. You, you've waited, so now you find out. The point is, if we can store music on a compact disc, why can't we store a man's intelligence and personality on one? So I have the engineers figuring that out now. Brain mapping. Artificial intelligence. We should have been working on it 30 years ago. But I will say this, and I'm going to say it on tape so everybody hears it a hundred times a day. If I die before you people can pour me into a computer, I want Carolyn to run this place. <coughs> now she'll argue. She'll say she can't. She's modest like that, but you make her. <coughs> Hell, put her in my computer. I don't care. All right, test's over. <coughs> you can head on back to your desk. Goodbye, sir. And that is the last you hear of Cave Johnson. Uh, he dies in the late 80s. Now, we start trying to get back up to the surface, and there's no more old Aperture tests, we just go, the next test is with Wheatley, and that's hella fun. So, uh, yep. I know things look bleak, but that crazy man down there was right. Let's not take these lemons. We are going to march right back upstairs and make him put me back in my body. And he'll probably kill us because he's incredibly powerful and I have no plan. You get up to this big boy vault door, and above you here is the brand new enrichment center. When you get to the button to open the door, Gardas sees a, a poster. Wait, I've got an idea. That poster. Go look at it for a second, would you? Paradoxes. No AI can resist thinking about them. I know how we can beat him. Once you open the vault door, there is yet another anti-climax, and you finally get back to the new enrichment center. For God's sake, your boxes with legs! It's, it's literally your only purpose, walking onto but How can you not do the one thing you're designed for? Try to get us down there. With a paradox. I have to stay, despite him turning evil, I felt so happy seeing him again, man. Just hearing his voice is enough to, to make you happy, you know? Oh, that's funny, is it? Oh, it's funny, because we've been at this for 12 hours, and you haven't solved it either, so I don't know why you're laughing. You've got one hour! Solve it! So you solve Whitley's puzzle for him, because clearly these robots just hate him. Ah, <laughs> yes! I knew you'd solve it! Oh. Gladys does a bit of a, a paradox on him. Although it, it works on the on, on the Franken turrets, but it doesn't work on Wheatley because they're smarter than him. Wheatley takes you on a bunch of tests, most of them just being Gladys's tests, but very, very slightly changed. It's alright, everything's good, I just invented some more tests. This is one of my tests. Not entirely, not entirely. Look at the word test there on the wall, that's brand new. And at certain parts during the tests, he hints to there being a big surprise at the end of it. You two are going to love this big surprise. In fact, you might say you're going to love it to death. You're going to love it until, you, until it kills you, until you're dead. <laughs> All right, I don't know whether you're, uh, you're picking up on what I'm saying there. Yes, but... thanks. We get it. 
which, you know, it's very obvious that he's going to kill you. He eventually traps you in a very obviously easy test. Just play along. Surprise! We're doing it now. Then he brings you to him on an excursion funnel, and so begins the part where he kills you. Well, this is the part where he kills us. Hello, this is the part where I kill you. Had a bit of a brainwave, there I was, smashing some steel plates together, and I thought to myself, yeah, it's deadly, but what's missing? What's missing? And I thought, no, 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 don't do that, don't, stand right here, stand. Where'd you go? Come back, come back! No, seriously, do come back, please, come back, please. Okay, look, I've decided I'm not going to kill you. Okay, if you come back. Oh, you came back, I didn't... Oh, I didn't plan for this. Uh, can't reset the death trap. Um, oh, could you, could you just jump into that pit? Would you just jump into that pit for me? You're saying to yourself, why should I jump in the pit? I'll tell you why. Guess who's down there? Your parents! You're not adopted after all. It's your natural parents down there in the pit. Should have mentioned it before, but I didn't. Oh, I'll tell you what's also down there. Your parents! And there's also an escape elevator down there. Funny, I should have mentioned before, to pop down, jump down, you got your folks down there, and an escape elevator. And the three portal device. Also, it's, it's all down there. A farm, a pony farm, and, uh, oh, just jump down, would you? You really do have brain damage, don't you? I can't believe you came back. Then once you continue escaping, Wheatley drags a massive thing in front of you with a trap in it. Ha! Ah, death trap! Are they killing you? They are killing you, aren't they? Silently killing you. Probably. This next bit isn't really story focused. I just really love the lines he says. You don't even get to hear these usually. You have to do something specific to be able to hear them. Oh! I see. Clever. Very clever. And foolish. No way out. You're at my mercy. And I don't have any. You're at my nothing. No, wait, come back. Come, sorry, please. No, I was going, I was going somewhere with all that. Fool! You were a fool to come back because I've trapped you again. Helpless. You're at my mercy. And I don't have any. You're at my nothing. You're at my, you're at my lack of mercy. And again, not playing along, you're ruining what are some really good speeches, actually. Didn't even get to the good part yet. Twist ending. So twisty, you might even call it spinning. <laughs> Don't ignore the laughter, ignore, nothing to worry about. The Puppet Master! You're a puppet in a play, and I hold all the strings. And cards, still. Still got the card, got the cards in one hand, and I got the strings in the other hand. And I'm making you dance like a puppet, playing cards. Alright, fine, I'm not saying another word till you do it properly. I'm sick of this. If you can't tell by now, Wheatley's traps are incredibly useless. Not a single one of them has worked. So, predictably, the next one it is a bad trap. Holmes versus Moriarty. Aristotle versus Mashy Spike Plate. Stay still, please. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Come back, come back! You do this little puzzle, which is kind of cool. You just got to get rid of the turrets with the blue gel. And then you start getting into the proper end game. Crashing's too good for him. First, he'll spend a year in the incinerator. Year two, cryogenic refrigeration wing. Then, ten years in the chamber I built where all the robots scream at you. Then, I'll kill him. Now, believe it or not, this is also a tutorial. Tutorials in Valve games usually do it by showing you and not telling you. For example, this tutorial is to blow up the conversion gel tank, which means you can use it in the boss battle because Wheatley made it so there's no portal surfaces. So it's basically showing you that you can do that just in case, you know, you don't think you can. And because the boss fight is literally five minutes from this area, pretty much. So, uh, hey, yeah, meme. You are getting very close to my lair. And uh, I just wanted to give you the chance to kill yourself now before you get to the lair. Uh, you can just jump into that masher, just there, 
uh, less a death trap, more a death option for you. Sounds crazy, but hear me out, hear me out. Once you get to my lair, death will not be an option, all right? It will be mandatory. Okay, I'll take that as a no then. I've been looking forward to this bit, not because I'm really eager to show it in the video, but more because this is such a great song for this type of thing. It makes me happy watching it every single time. You'll, you'll see what I mean. Here you go. Now, after all this time, we finally confront Wheatley in person, and we get this great boss fight introduction. Plug me in and I'll take you up. Look, even if you think we're still enemies, we're enemies with a common interest. Revenge. You like revenge, right? Everybody likes revenge. Well, let's go get some. Well, well, well. Welcome to my lair. Let me just flag something up. According to the control panel light up there, the entire building is going to self-destruct in about six minutes. I'm pretty sure it's a problem with the light. I think the light's on the blink, but just in case it isn't, I am actually going to have to kill you, um, as discussed earlier. So let's call that three minutes and then a minute break, but we should leave allegedly two minutes to figure out how to shut down whatever is starting all the fires. So anyway, that's the itinerary. Also, I took the liberty of watching the tapes of you killing her, and I'm not going to make the same mistakes. Four-part plan is this. One, no portal services. Two, start the neurotoxin immediately. Three, bomb-proof shields for me. Leading directly onto number four, four, throwing it. So, step by step through the boss fight. First things first, you want to get Wheatley's bombs and you want to make him aim at the tube where the conversion gel comes from. Once that's happened, he's going to scream. Oh, ah, oh, oh, ah! Ah, that's sounded real. No, that was actually an impression of you. Actually, because you just fell into my trap. My brilliant trap. So after that, you've got to put a portal right in front of you on the ground and somewhere where his shields aren't aimed. So once the bomb goes to you, it will go through your portal and onto him instead. Then that will shut him down for a few seconds, giving you time to get a corrupted core and attach it to him. I'm delivering the first core up near the cat wall. The first time you have the space core, which is a great core. He's just obsessed with space. He's very, very funny. <laughs> Second core, the adventure core. He's um, he's also pretty cool. Hey, countdown clock. Man, that is trouble. Situation's looking pretty up. Such a beautiful woman. Maybe you don't mind me saying. And the third core is the fact core, which just says random, completely false facts. In Victorian England, the commoner was not allowed to look directly at the screen. Just to believe at the time that the core had the ability to steal bombs. Once you connect all the cores to him, this plays out. Core corruption at 100%. Ah! Manual core replacement required. Oh, I see. <laughs> Substitute core. Are you ready to start? Corrupted core. Are you ready to start? What do you think? Interpreting vague answer as yes. No, 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 no. Didn't pick up on my sarcasm. Stalemate detected. Stalemate resolution associate. Please press the stalemate resolution button. Go press the button. Go press it. Do not press that button. You are joking! You have got to be kidding me! Well, I'm still in control, and I have no idea how to fix this place! Oh, you had to play bloody cat and mouse, didn't you? While people were trying to work! Yeah, well now we're all gonna pay the price, because we're all gonna bloody die! Space! 
Seis. Seis. Ah, let go. Let go. I'm still connected. I can pull myself in. I can still fix this. I already fixed it. And you are not coming back. Oh, no. Change your plans. Hold on to me. Tighter. Ah, run. a valuable lesson. I thought you were my greatest enemy, when all along you were my best friend. The surge of emotion that shot through me when I saved your life taught me an even more valuable lesson, where Carolyn lives in my brain. Carolyn, deleting. Goodbye, Carolyn. You know, deleting Carolyn just now taught me a valuable lesson. The best solution to a problem is usually the easiest one. And I'll be honest, killing you is hard. You know what my days used to be like? I just tested. Nobody murdered me, or put me in a potato, or fed me to birds. I had a pretty good life. And then you showed up, you dangerous, mute, lunatic. So you know what? You win. Just go. <laughs> it's been fun. Don't come back. And that marks the end of Portal 2. I don't really have much to say here. I guess Portal 2 is a very funny, very story-driven game, like any other Valve game, really. Out of all the games Valve has made, Portal 2 is, has always been and will always be my favorite. I remember the first time I played Portal 2, I was blown away. Like, I, I loved it. And I, I have memories of, like, you know, me getting told off because the, the game said said bloody and uh that was just just what my mum's like so i guess this is goodbye thank you so much for watching especially this whole almost an hour long video this video has taken me months to make and i am so happy with the result if i do it again i don't know if i will 
But if I do it again with any other thing, there is things I'll, I'll improve on. But if you have any suggestions, please tell me because I need any suggestions, any help I can get. So that's it for now. And uh, the next video will probably be a normal video. So thank you for watching. Did you think I meant you? That would be funny if it weren't so sad. Well, you have been replaced. I don't need anyone now. When I delete you, maybe I'll stop feeling so bad. Go make some new disaster. That's what I'm counting on. So much space. Need to see it all. <laughs> I wish I could take it all back. I honestly do. I honestly do wish I could take it all back. And not just because I'm stranded in space. I'm in space. I know who you are, mate. Yeah, we're both in space. Space! Anyway. You know, if I was ever to see her again, do you know what I'd say? I'm in space. I'd say, I'm sorry. Sincerely. I am sorry I was bossy and monstrous, and I am genuinely sorry. I'm in space. The end.